is meant to be interactive. With that, I welcome you back and I am going to pass it over to our team at Fort Peck Community College. We are so honored to have them here today. Nora is our site host. I pass it over to you, Nora. If you are comfortable unmuting yourself, we would love to do a warm welcome to the Fort Peck Community College team by sharing a round of applause. Nora, it's all yours. Thank you for hosting us today. Thank you so much. Ambawashte, everybody. Good morning. What a good day it is. Um, before we before we start, it is traditional in our way to open with a prayer, and I would like to pass it over to our Uncle Tommy Christian, if you would be so kind, Uncle. Why, sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, all my relatives, again, what I shared with you, my language, I welcome you all here. I, I shared with you on, on this day, I'm going to speak to you from my heart, and I offer you all my hand. And again, uh, I carry the, the Nakona name of uh, Eagle Claw, but they also refer to me as Four. And that's what I shared with in my language. I am so uh, honored to be here. And of course, uh, my niece here uh, asked me to, to uh, pray for all of us uh, getting our, our, our program here started, which is uh, uh, something that is, is to help us understand the importance of uh, remaining somewhat apolitical or apersonal in, in respects to how we're going to go forward for the sake of others, for those that we um, uh, are, are doing a lot of our work for. And so... Uh, I want to thank you at this time, my niece, for bringing me here. So again, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, the Fort Peck Community College and me as a cultural liaison uh, person here at the college, I just wanted to uh, uh, ask you all to whatever higher power you go to, to help me as we, uh, again, uh, acknowledge those that may be in need today. And remember, especially those that uh, are, are mourning lost loved ones, those that may be ill and and of course, our, our warriors that uh, uh, take on a lot of responsibility in defending this freedom. So just some words that I will share in my, my prayer and my language uh, to help you understand the importance of coming together as spiritual people and, and really uh, continuing to wish for good things for our future. So with that, help me out, my relatives. Atukashila nawakantanka tadeya doba unchimakana makaina. Nakumi taki api wanagi makpea ktaya ge ho cho ka akta hiopo. Ushia keni taki api wayawa oyate ki naha tribal colleges hecha na ushia ke owi chakiapo ushi wi chalapo. Atukashi la wa kantanka gixiapo mitaki api wunuk chalapi wi chak chalapi wa kain japi ukshilapi mchin chalapi kushkapi wi kushkapi chaku wakshi unk upi. We chose on the unk upi ushia ke. Okay, a chawa ushi we chalapo. A tu kashi la na wa kantanka. Kixi apo mitaki api a gichita oyate ki zuya ekta u chasha bile wea bile. Chanku washte unk upi. Okay, a wo ushi we chalapo. A tu kashi la na wa kantanka. Oyate oyasi chanku luta aga omani o we chaki apo ushi we chalapo. And we chose any unk upi. Okay, a wo ushi we chalapo. Wopila chicha apelo na ha apetu washte ma ko na ha oke a wona ha wopila chicha atu kashila na wa kantanka kiksi apo mitaki api na ha wayaza pi unchi ma kaumani kiksi apo mitaki api chante yoksi cha omani o wi chaki apo unchi wi chalapo atu kashila wa kantanka filama elo ampetu washte ma ko ha mitaki o asi wa ma kashka o asi. Did you want me to do anything else, my girl? Well, Uncle, I thank you so much for sharing. Um, I would like to uh, offer a quick welcome. I know I'm not going to do it as good as President Gorno. I kind of wasn't really expecting to offer a welcome today. <laughs> um, but uh, just a few words, and Uncle, um, if you want to talk about the language and the culture and language of Fort Peck, I know that we had a, a session just the other day where you shared a lot of great stories. Um, I just wanna quickly say to everybody in attendance, thank you so much for coming 
and listening to our session today. There is something really amazing about working at a tribal college. There's just something really special about knowing that every single day we take part in rebuilding our nations and contributing to the people who can really benefit. There is something wonderful about academic sovereignty. And I hope that as we all progress in our nation building, we reclaim the power of research and taking back our knowledge that has been taken from us and building our own capacity for research. That might be a, a little radical maybe to some, but this is, I love working at an institution that can really reclaim our power as indigenous people. Um, Uncle, if you'd like to, uh, if you're so kind to share some of the culture and language of Fort Peck. Okay. Yeah, and again, I'd like to welcome you all here and thank you for attending this meeting to give you a little bit more understanding of uh, our Fort Peck Community College is located here in Poplar, Montana. We're in the northeast corner of Montana and uh, our resources are somewhat limited. And based on that, we've survived this far. So I think we're gonna do a good job going forward. But I think it's really essential that the Fort Peck Community College uh, uh, people understand that we are a community college and, and we're community based and we're helping our younger people understand the importance of uh, that identity, you know, of all of our people, not just Indians. We're not here just to pursue an Indian perspective, but to help people understand the diversity and the uniqueness uh, based on natural law in which we, the Dakota, Nakona, and Lakota evolved from is something that should become an enhancement and enrichment for the sake of the growth of our children. And of course, our children uh, representing our future. So with that, you know, we, we continue to pursue these things from a cultural perspective as it relates to the value system that we refer to as natural law. Understanding the differences that exist there, they're not, they're not wrong because they're different. They're just diverse in that manner. And the uniqueness that we speak about is we maintain our language, our ceremony, our protocol in respects to helping people understand uh, that to make them aware of who and what we are as Dakona, Nakona, Lakota people, um, uh, they can become somewhat more culturally responsive. Eh? And, and once we realize that, then I think we can uh, make this a better place for our children. So the um, Fort Pitt Community College has really taken it upon themselves to kind of help our, our younger people understand the importance of, of coming forward and, and uh, looking inwardly and helping us understand what natural law really is and what that means to us as Dakota, Lakota, Nakona people, and to help us realize the importance of coming together as family. And, and, and again, uh, in, in, our, in our college here, we have, uh, if, you, if you sign up for college, I don't care if you're Indian, white, whatever the case may be, uh, you become a part of a society, the Buffalo Chaser Society. And with that, there's certain uh, responsibilities you take upon yourself in that representation of that society. So that's what we try, we're trying to share. My nephew, Elijah, will, he's the vice president of the college, or he'll be elaborate a little bit more on this uh, uh, um, um, podcast that we do every week uh, at Thursday from three to four. We're going to do it this afternoon as well. And we've been doing that for a, a year or better. And in that process, uh, we take it upon ourselves to really share this cultural perspective, not only in how we act or behave, but also how we talk. And in addition to that, even how we think, because again, that represents that uniqueness uh, and included with that diversity that helps people understand uh, uh, the respect that we've afforded our non-Indian relatives and now we're wishing for some reciprocation, some to be reciprocal in that respect that in learning about us so that they can become culturally responsive. I truly think a lot of the behavior of today is a learned behavior. It's not naturally who we are, but once, uh, but we don't know where we're going. So if we provide them with the information that they need to, to kind of help us with that respect and, and, and give us that respect back, I think they most people will, will in general because of that learned behavior. And of course, you hear a lot of the unrest that's going on, not only in the United States, but over in, in Ukraine and whatnot. And, uh, you know, our, our understanding of these things will help us realize that that's why I stated earlier before my prayer that as a spiritual person, we try to remain apolitical and apersonal. 
not wishing to pursue a political agenda or our personal agenda, but to help us understand we're in this together. And as we do these things, um, in my language, we say, and what that means is you prepare yourself for that mystery of death, or you prepare yourself for anything for that matter. And how you prepare yourself to go beyond that fear of this mystery of death is you, you try to be good to everything and everybody. And in that process, as well as you can, not as well as anybody else wants you to, but as well as you can, you, you do that. And it's that common and that basic. And in that process, it helps you to understand the importance of exercising these virtues that we, we, we utilize to develop our character to become stronger. And in that, you know, I'm talking about compassion, empathy, caring, sharing, loving, patience, generosity, all of those virtues that are not blessings, but something that we need to practice to, to give our character the strength to kind of overcome some of these insecurities so that we don't have to go and push them on somebody else. And if you'll notice, a lot of the insecurities are, are acted out when they get mad or get upset or argue or, or fight with one another like that. That's very humanistic. That's not very spiritual because, again, everything that we do, we do it for the sake of others. Even in our prayers, we do it not for ourselves, but we do it for wishes, for good things for other people, especially for their future. And that's our children. And, and so as we do these things, I think it's really important for a community college to pursue these things in a community from a community perspective so that we can identify and relate and protect those things and understand that we don't only represent ourselves, but we represent our family, our tribe, and especially our community in which we come from. So we maintain that dignity and honor to help people understand we're wishing to sustain the integrity of who and what we are as a people so that they realize that, hey, those guys are still alive and well from Fort Peck Community College and boy, they're kind of good buffalo chasers. So, uh, and, and that's that inclusive manner in which we, we live by from this natural law perspective. Uh, we're, it's totally inclusive. It includes everything and everybody. And so in that process, when we pray or when we do things and when we suffer and, and all that, we do that to kind of help this higher power understand our commitment and our sincerity to the manner in which we choose to walk in pursuit of our dedication and our purpose in this life as we spend time on our mother earth. Oh man, I'm preaching here. You guys need to give me a hallelujah. <laughs> but uh, there you go. But uh, I don't know how much more I can share right now, my niece, but as we do these things, uh, we need to understand that that diversity that does exist out there. And let's, let's have a little bit more of an inclusive understanding of who and what we are based on that educational process. You know, the education represents a linear perspective in, in regards to learning something. But in our way, it's more of an ad, abstract learning process where we kind of experiential teaching into where we want to include that, that hands-on experiential process. And we put them together. Some call it book sense and common sense. I call it linear and abstract, but that's okay as long as they grasp the understanding which we're pursuing that sense of balance in a contemporary way of life, okay? And we believe that this way of life, contemporary, is very fast. And you got to be fast to be able to compete, to pay your bills and live a, a standard of life in which you're used to. But at the same time, let's not forget that you need to slow down to deal with the stress and, and take your time from a traditional perspective and, 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 and follow the protocols in which... Uh, uh, precipitate from natural law to help us realize that hey we're humans but we're also spiritual too so we aspire to that sense of balance to help us become better people and that preparation to go and be with our relatives on the other side this transition that we take when we go to this next dimension and so in that our, our language helps represent that when we say we just we don't have no words in our language for goodbye we say doksha kewa chagimte and that means I shall see you again. And that's representative of over uh, what most non-Indian people would refer to as heaven and, and uh, what we call happy hunting ground. <laughs> but uh, I don't know how much more else that you'd like for me to share, Nora, but uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Elijah, uh, Toshka Elijah, my nephew, will expound on the, the podcast in which we share too. So, oh, hecha to Allah, mitake Thank you so much, Uncle. And 
You, know, you guys, something that has really been the highlight of my semester is being able to sit down with Uncle Tommy once a week. And we've been filming a series called Lunch with Uncle Tommy. And it's just been good fun just being able to you know, sit together. And we've been filming as he tells his stories and shares his cultural knowledge and his approach and just his wisdom in general. And it's been a really good time. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll have something for our archives and have something to share. Um, we have Roxanne Smith coming up. She's in the process of logging on right now. Um, I'm just gonna double check my text. I'm kind of like reeling people in on the fly a little bit. <laughs> um, but while she's logging on, um, let me just double check and see if Mike Turcott was able to make it. He might not have been able to make it, um, but I will share on his behalf. I'm definitely not gonna do as good as Mike or as Alex James, but something that we have been focusing on um, is revamping our native language instructor program. Um, we have been, you know, as a tribal college dedicated to, you know, revitalizing both Nakona and Dakota languages here on Fort Peck. Um, and I believe that we have local schools that have job openings for native language instruction so that from the elementary and the junior and high school level, our students can you know, become more exposed and immersed to their native languages. Um, and uh, Michael Turcott and Alex James have been uh, you know, very dedicated in actually getting that program started. Uh, Alex James was actually an FPCC student herself, and she learned Dakota language here. And now she's leading the instructor program, which is really wonderful. Um, let me see, I'm going to jump ahead to my section if Roxanne isn't here. I'm, I'm here, Nora. Oh, hello, Auntie, hello, perfect, right on time. I'd like to introduce Roxanne Smith. She is the director of our Shantae program. Roxanne, I turn it over to you. Okay, Can um, I, I'd like to share my slides at some point, so I'm, I'm gonna switch over to that, but first I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Roxanne Smith. I'm also a product of FPCC. I'm a graduate of 1985. <laughs> um, and back then our college president was Jim Shanley and uh, he recruited me to, to uh, teach after working as a secretary for a few years. It was during that transition from when um, we were going into the old IBM computers. And so I learned a lot um, on my own because you know computers were just becoming a thing back then. So he recruited me to actually start teaching. So the fall of 1989, I began my career as a teacher. And so I didn't, I only had my AA degree. And so Jim um, said, well, my girl, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, hire you to be, a, to teach, you know, you've been teaching yourself how to use these computers. We're gonna buy more computers and we want you to teach our community, our, our, our students how to use them. So I go, okay, you know, I was kind of scared, but okay. And he said, but the, but the I'm gonna um, tell you, my girl, you gotta go back to school and get your bachelor's degree. I said, oh, okay, you know, I'm a big dummy, you know. <laughs> to go to summer school for several summers because it was before internet and before you know it was very hard because um, I already had several um, education classes from when I first uh, graduated from high school so I was already on an educational path and so it was really difficult at that time to find classes that would count toward my degree and so I went here and I went there I went to northern one summer at uh, Haver I went to uh, Dickinson, I went to um, MSU Billings, well, back then it was Eastern, and then I uh, took some classes. I ended up finishing with Rocky Mountain College, so I'm a Batlin bear. <laughs> and, and, um, and then I, um, I thought I was done, you know, I thought I was done. I was like, okay, uncle, I, I got my degree now. And so I thought I was all good now. <clears throat> So my girl, in order to teach at a tribal college and at colleges, you have to have a master's degree. I'm like, oh my Lord. <laughs> so, 
So I ended up starting a program with uh, um, what was kind of kind of on the pathway to where we are today. Leslie College was out of Boston, Massachusetts, and they they were in uh, Montana and they were actually um, doing um, kind of like correspondence classes, I guess they were, but I had to go to Billings once a month for classes back then. And, and um, it was an 18 month program and I got my degree and, and got my master's degree in curriculum and instruction with the emphasis in computers and education, which is absolutely obsolete now because computers have changed so much over the years. So I taught for several years and I took a little bird walk here and there, but um, I, I took the political route like my uncle Tommy and um, worked. I worked in South Dakota in the educational field as an education specialist. I worked with the, the Rosebud tribe and visited all of their schools as an educational specialist. Um, but at this point, um, I came back to FPCC to teach Native American studies, and then I was lured over to um, the Chante project, and that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit. I have a few slides, and I might go over a little, a little bit from five minutes, but um, I'll, I'll try to go fast. <clears throat> okay. How do I do this? Is, can you guys see my PowerPoint? Okay. So this is um, this is our logo <clears throat> for Peck Community College logo, and for some reason, now I need to start that slideshow. Right? Okay, I think it's gonna go. All right. So we I work with the Chante Project, and the Chante Project Chante in our Dakota language means heart, and Chande in our in our Assiniboine language means heart. Um, and the folks that wrote the grant um, were from uh, the Standing Rock Reservation, and that's how the name got chosen. And so when we when we moved here, we developed a little logo for our project that um, is it's got the heart and the and the brain. And a lot of that uncle mentioned a little bit ago about being culturally responsive in in the areas in which you teach and in areas which when you whenever you're working with um, any any no matter where you go to teach, you can go to um, uh, Chicago, and you're going to have to learn how to um, learn about how to uh, reach those children. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to touch their heart so that they can work their minds and become, you know, productive members of society to learn how to be, be uh, culturally um, um, pride, have a pride in themselves, but also to be able to be critical thinkers. And this is what our, you know, we're, we're trying to honor our, um, our mission of our college, um, we're, we're including our culture of our people, um, but we're also, we want them to um, get their degree and be like Uncle Jim and hold that carrot in front of them and tell them they got to go to school and you got to do this. No, 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 you got to go and get your bachelor's. No, 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 you got to get your master's. So, I mean, we got to, we kind of got to be like that, but we also have to realize that, hey, we, we realize you have children. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer this class to you online, or we're gonna have hybrid classes for you. And so um, our Chante project was a, was a uh, five-year project, four-year four project, four-year project. And um, what we did was we started off really great. We were able to do a lot of wonderful social emotional type learning. We also did tutoring and math and science because that was in our, in our um, objectives. But I think what happened was COVID happened, you know, um, the pandemic happened. So we had to rethink everything. And so um, a lot of what we did was we, we provided um, um, professional developments for, for our um, school teachers. We worked with the, the local um, uh, MEA, the Montana Education um, they put on these conferences for on, on our reservation every year. So we really helped them out. And we met a man by the name of Matthew Johnson. He's from the he's from Browning, and he does a he does a culturally responsive um, trauma informed practices workshop. And in that, he does more of like re really what it boils down to is um, on giving everybody a space to speak their heart in a in a safe safe place. So so um, in the rest of the world, it's you know, we, we call them talking circles. In, um, in the rest of the world, call, they call it restorative justice circles. But when we went to this workshop, 
guess what? It's it's all based upon our culture. It's a based upon the native way of sitting in a circle and everybody has a voice. So we really, really liked that. And so we adopted that. Our, um, we did professional development. We brought Mike uh, we brought um, Matthew here to our conferences, and he's been invited back every year, and he's coming back in the fall again, because um, we do professional development for our school teachers. I'm really a believer in train the trainers. I've been doing these for several years now, because I was um, it, it, teaching here at the college. I was also the educational uh, advisor for some time, and I really believe that you need to always have opportunities to update your teachers that are teaching in your, in your, um, on your reservation, and you really need to help them become social, uh, not socially, but um, in tune with who they're going to be teaching. So it really goes along with culturally responsive yeah. teaching. Um, during this period of time, we worked with a, a, a program called Maps Media, and they were out of Hamilton, Montana, and COVID happened, so we had to switch everything over to so that it was um, more um, online. So our program was a very well-funded program. And so we had to redistribute a lot of our money. So we purchased um, Chromebooks. We helped the schools out with a lot of their technology needs. We, we, we continue to have outreach to our, uh, our, our parents and our schools. We worked with the, the um, truancy office and helped um, to out have outreach with them. We went out into every community that had kids that weren't attending, they were sleeping in, not waking up, doing their school, you know, <laughs> they thought they were on vacation. <laughs> and so we really, really tried to be that liaison to the, to the uh, families at home. And so prior to, prior to being, um, staying at home, we, we had um, uh, Marty Ream was our, um, our boss at the time, and he, he's really good at hand games. So we took hand games into our schools and it really helped to get the kids um, active and engaged. And it was really a wonderful way. And I strongly recommend um, if you need a way to bring people together into a circle that, that, you, that you do something similar. Um, this is um, another, uh, this, this is our logos here, the Chan, Chande and Chande. Um, Carly, our, my, our first boss designed it and it's the heart and the brain and how they connect. And it's all, uh, we base it upon the, the book um, by Zaretta Hammond and it talks about culturally responsive teaching and that book can be applicable to no matter what culture you belong to. Um, this is a, just a slide that, that um, we, we use um, to uh, promote culturally responsive teaching. This was taken out of that book. And so I really, uh, we learned a lot. We based a lot of what we did upon her book. Um, so we, as like I said, we did a lot of things over this period of time and during COVID. And so um, we um, had teachers that were willing to teach during COVID. They taught using Google Classroom and some of them had never used Google Classroom before. So I, I was busy teaching Google Classroom. I had to quickly learn it and then go out into the schools and talk to the teachers and show them, you know, we were just beginners, you know, I was like, oh, I, I can do this, you know? And so um, we passed out, uh, we gave, we gave um, art books, you know, those journal books and that sort of thing to kids. And, and um, they had assignments. And this is an example of one of our local stories about this um, old, there's a rock down in the Fort Kip area and um, they, they talked about some of our cultural areas and the kids had to illustrate and tell what they learned. And so again, you're touching base with who you are and we wanna make sure that they, they, uh, the kids um, um, set foot upon the land so that, so that, because that's all part of healing. You know, it's, it, you, you want them to appreciate what we have on our reservation and the plants that, that live here and the buffalo that live here. So, so we brought in, um, we brought in elders, we brought in Uncle Tommy, we brought in um, people that were storytellers. And Lois Redock is one of our really well-known storytellers on our reservation. Um, she, she's just wonderful. Um, she tells, she has some wonderful stories to share. And so this is what, um, one of the pictures that we have here, um, showing what we did with, with her bringing people in. We also during COVID had to bring people 
in and um, we had to restructure everything. So we we um, hired our local uh, media people, and they they actually um, recorded some of these people visiting and talking, and and um, we and we've got we one of our emphasis is. Uh, career in college. And so we brought in people from the communities that represented different, um, different pro projects, you know, so we brought um, Tote Greyhawk, he was one of the, he works as a mechanic down at the, um, um, our local bus um, service transportation office. And we brought, we brought a whole variety of people, people that had high degrees and um, people that, you know, were were mechanics and just a whole variety of people. And, and so that the kids can learn a little bit about careers and what it takes to work in the communities. And so um, during COVID, we had some fun things that we did. We all had to record a video and do something silly and make the kids laugh and try to enjoy themselves so that they don't fall into depression because that, that really happened. And we saw it firsthand because we were out in the communities. And, um, and so we really tried to work with them in that, re in that area. And we had a lot of fun doing it. It was a hard work, but we, we, you know, we did a lot of work and I think the kids appreciated it, giving them something to do. Um, we did, a, um, we designed, we have a local artist that designed this, um, this, this little picture for us. I mean, that picture of the, the girl in red, you know, that represents MMIW. And so we had these scarves and we went to, before COVID, we took these scarves and we went to visit all, well, we went to all the powwows on our reservation and we handed out these scarves and, um, and some of the, the kids wanted to sew pillows out of them. And so that was really cool. Poplar School did that. And then this is another example of one of our professional development trainings where we did restorative justice. And one of the cool things that they told us is to always have a um, centerpiece so that, you know, how, you know how us Indians are, we don't like anybody staring at us, you know, like, what you looking at, you know? <laughs> so um, they, that's, that was really cool. You know, they, they, they gave us that to always, always, you always have to be sitting in a circle and you have something in the middle to kind of take the eyes, a soft gaze, you're looking at the, the middle, you're not staring at anybody with your hard stares. Um, during COVID, our program put together these boxes with all, they were like little care packages. They had a, like a native soap, you know, those little native soaps. And we had a powwow um, CD or DVD. They could pop it in and they could get exercise and dance. Um, we had a um, couple of graphic, native graphic books. They're like little cartoony looking books, but they were, they were written at a high level. I was surprised they were actually written maybe high school level, um, but the pictures were awesome. They were, they were wonderful. We had journals, we had, um, we had highlighters and gel pens and all. We had um, beads, oh my Lord, I still have beads laying on my floor in my house because we put together these little packages of beads with material and then we, we had kids, um, we had everything they needed to make a little medicine pouch. And so we just put a whole variety of little activities for kids to do during, during you know, when they were at, we were supposed to stay in place. Um, here's a picture of some of the soaps that we ordered. We ordered them from eighth, gen, eighth generation. They're really wonderful soaps. I'm hooked on them now. Um, so these are, we, we, we had to like preserve our culture. And we always, you know, that's part of our mission is we want to, we have to find out what those kids are interested in because as kids get older, their interests aren't our interests. You know, they're, they like TikTok, they like all um, music. And so we have to find ways to, to grab them and reel them in and then we could teach them math and then we could teach them science, you know, and that sort of thing. That's, what, that's kind of the, the um, direction that we went as we were trying to develop our program. Then what we did was, um, after school came back in session, we, we worked with this um, organization, I told you MAPS Media, and it was, um, it was originally, they were gonna come into the schools for two weeks and they were gonna do these little videos with kids. And so um, we have videos from each of our schools and we've, where we've been lately showcasing um, talent from our schools. Um, and a lot of it is to help them develop an identity, to help them to understand who they are and appreciate where they came from. And so that's what, you know, this is like 
my favorite thing that we did in our schools. We did a, a lot of culturally based after school programs um, was during COVID, you know, so I thought I have to put some, uh, some pictures in there of kids wearing their masks so that this is like, you know, unprecedented, you know, we, I mean, I mean, <sighs> the things you had to do to overcome the, the situation, the way that we live during this period of time. Um, so some of the things that they did, their podcasts, um, they did um, uh, digital videos, or what are they call, uh, uh, not videos, pictures, digital photography, they did ended up with the, the final one was those little videos. But these were some of the questions that we asked them, where do we come from? And who are our heroes? What is our history? What does it mean to be native today? And what are our accomplishments? And what does our culture mean today? So these were some of the things, you know, that we would ask the kids. And then um, we, we hired a guy to come in and he helped them to um, actually put their thoughts down on paper. And then from there, then they, then they made these podcasts. The kids really weren't into podcasting too much. Maybe they'll get better over time. They're always, they're always a little shy to, to actually develop their own questions and to interview people. Um, learning, teaching, sharing, healing. These are, that's what we're all about here. You know, we want to, we want to be able to be resilient and to continue to whatever we do, work toward healing, um, be good to one another and just really common sense type things that, that we want to, we want our kids to, to go away with after this pro project's over, we want, we would hope that this would continue in our schools. Some of the fun things we did in the cultural area, they, you know, everybody else wants to do ribbon skirts. Um, Frazier actually really took on, took on how to build, how to make star quilts. Um, that's harder and it takes much more time consuming. We did beading, we did drum making, and um, we actually had one teacher who did a guitar class, which the kids really liked. Um, some of the examples of this, the work we did um, during COVID again, was um, telling stories. It was all done through um, Google Classroom, but we provided all of the materials that they needed. We talked about the, um, the winter counts and, and um, we had them do a winter count of what, whatever stories they heard. And we used chamois cloth. So we went to Walmart and we bought them out of all of their chamois cloths. And that's what they used to make their, their um, winter counts. And, we, and again, just being really flexible with during the pandemic. And then our summer plans are, we want to, we, I wanted it to be fun for us because we have worked so hard that what we're going to do is we're going to take some kids camping. And so we've got all of, we've got the notices in the schools. We want the kids to write an essay and tell us why you would, you want to be picked to go camping this summer. <laughs> I mean, because we've got so many kids across the reservation. And we've already got camping sites picked out. One is in um, Bozeman. We're going to stay at the Bozeman Hot Springs. We've got our um, spots all reserved. And then we're going to go to Colson because, well, you know, these are places a lot of our kids have never gone to. And, and then we're going to stress like honoring Mother Earth and, you know, like how, what, what can we do if we had to eat? Like, what if we had to eat what, whatever we caught if we were fishing or if we had to live off, um, turn up soup or whatever we have, we're going to try to figure it out. And then we're also going to assist our, every school is having summer school because they're all catching up from COVID. They've all kind of fallen behind. So our program is going to also help them with, with, um, with some of their expenses. Um, these are just some pictures. Um, that one picture on the left was one of the videos. You can see that in the background, one of the fellows from Maps Media was recording her and she was very proud of, of being an athlete and She's just, um, so we just, they just caught a really good picture um, of her. And then uh, one of the first year we were in business, I so to speak, was we had a mural painting. And so on the side of one of our buildings on our campus, we have a huge mural that was created by kids. And one of our students that is attending uh, uh, Santa Fe, I think, Santa Fe Institute of Art, she came back as a student and did this mural class for our kids. And then um, we, we, got, we had some kids do drum making. And then of course, in this, right now we're finally wide open. So we had all the colleges from across the state come in. And so we had um, all of our, quite a number of our students from across the reservation come in and visit each of the colleges 
and it's so cool to, to just be able to see people again, you know. Um, we annually, um, we have FAFSA nights, and so that's to help help our kids get their FAFSA papers filled out. And we just do a lot of outreach with, with the high schools and junior highs. And that's all I have. I'm sorry I went over. Thank you so much, Roxy. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I just listen to you guys talk about Shantae all day. Um, if there's anybody who um, would feel like they would benefit from like a like a separate presentation at a different time, uh, please let us know. Um, Shantae, I mean, my, my husband also works on the Shantae team and it has been so wonderful as recruitment retention to work with Shantae and be more present in our local schools and work with the students. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Roxanne. You're um, welcome. So I, believe, yay. So I believe that's the, the end of our time. And um, if there's any questions, we're more than happy to answer. I want to take a moment um, because Fort Peck Community College, y'all just did an amazing job of starting off the second day. So for those that feel comfortable, please feel free to come off mute. Let's give Fort Peck Community College a big round of applause.